Welcome back to our four-part series where we are modeling this rose for all you SOLIDWORKS users looking for something a little different to model. We have the rosebud complete and we're ready to model in the calyx and stem. The calyx is made up of leaf-like sepals which we will model using a few additional surfacing tools. Let's sketch on the right plane and using the spline tool I'll draw the cross-sectional shape of the center of the sepal. We will use this sketch to create a revolved reference surface, so I'll sketch in a construction center line to revolve around. Under the Surfaces tab, navigate to the Revolved Surface feature and select the sketch. Rather than revolve this 360 degrees, in the drop-down under Direction 1, select Mid-Plane and we'll revolve this 60 degrees across a mid-plane. We're going to reference this surface to build our first sepal in two halves using a few filled surfaces, and this requires drawing in a few fully enclosed sketches. Let's hide all of our solid bodies and unhide the sketch we just created. Enter the 3D sketch environment, and in the drop-down under the Spline tool, select the Spline on Surface tool. Sketch half of this leaf-like shape on this reference surface. I'm going to make this somewhat of an S-curve shape. Now repeat this with another 3D sketch for the right half of the sepal. This time I'm going to make it more rounded rather than S-curved to give this some asymmetry. Now sketch on the top plane and using the Convert Entities tool, convert this circular edge that lies on the top plane. Sketch in a few construction lines where the sepals center line and outer edge intersects this circular edge, and use the Trim tool to trim away the unneeded portions of the curve. Repeat this for the other half of the sepal. Now we have our leaf-like shape outlined in 3D. Under the Surfaces tab, enter the Filled Surfaces tool and select the three lines that make up one half of the sepal. And we can repeat this for the other half, this time selecting the edge of our first half and ensuring the Merge Result option is selected to merge these two surfaces together at this shared center line. There we have our nice leaf-like shaped surface which we can thicken 0 0.005 inches in both directions. Unhide the reference axis we created in part two of the series, and let's do a circular pattern of the sepal. This will be equally spaced around 360 degrees, patterned five times to create the full calyx. We will wrap up this part of the series with a few advanced solid modeling techniques to build the rose's stem. We'll build the long bottom portion of the stem using a loft.
Navigate to Reference Geometry Plane to create a reference plane, offset 0.625 inches below the top plane. Sketch on this plane and we'll hide all of our solid bodies for now. I'll sketch the top profile of the stem with a simple circle, dimensioned a quarter of an inch in diameter, and offset in the x direction from the origin a bit just to maintain a bit of asymmetry. Now on the front plane, let's create the path sketch. I'll dimension a center line to 10 inches below the origin, and using a few splines, I'll create an organic shape to mimic the shape of a typical rose stem. I'll go ahead and dimension these spline points to space them out a bit and adjust the handles to round out each section. Keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to create a path sketch from a single continuous line in order to create a sweep or loft. This can come in handy if you want to add an angular aspect to the feature as we do here. Now to create our other loft profiles, first add a few additional reference planes. I'll create one parallel to our other reference plane at this central point of our path sketch, and I'll create another reference plane intersecting the bottom point of the path sketch. On each plane, sketch a circle whose midpoint lies on the associated sketch point. On this first sketch, I'll dimension the circle to 0.175 inches. On the bottom sketch, rather than add a diameter dimension, I'll set this circle equal to the circle in the previous sketch. I'll hide my reference planes and find the Lofted Boss tool in the Features Command Manager. In the Loft Property Manager, first select the three profile sketches and then select the path sketch. Notice how this loft picks up the sharp edges we built into our path sketch. Now let's finish off the stem using the boundary tool. On the top plane, sketch a circle with the midpoint on the origin dimensioned to 3 quarters of an inch. Exit the sketch and in the command manager you'll find boundary boss slash base. The boundary tool is great for quickly creating curved or organic forms. In the property manager select the profile you'd like to create the boundary from. In this case our 3 quarter inch circle sketch and the top face of our lofted stem. Notice how the preview appears a bit twisted. We can adjust these little handles that pop up to align the two profiles. And here's a tip for getting a perfect alignment with circular edges. Just change the view to a side view and simply pull each control handle in the same direction to the right or left. The boundary tool allows you to create tangency constraints for each profile. In the case of the circular sketch, we can set a constraint normal to the sketch's plane. And we can adjust the strength of this constraint by adjusting the numbers shown here. Because our bottom profile interacts with the faces of our stem, we're given the option to make this portion of the boundary tangent with these faces, or in our case, the curvature to face option, which creates a curvature continuous constraint between these interacting faces. Now we have a nicely blended stem and calyx.
In the final part of our series, we will build in some uniquely patterned thorns and add some custom appearances to the model. Stay tuned.